Many people misunderstand the rules about whether or not you have to speak to the police, whether you have to give them your name, whether you have to give them your address, your date of birth, or any other details. And that's usually because people understand that there is a right to silence, but often misunderstand or confuse what the right to silence actually means, and what possible consequences exercising that right to silence might have moving forwards. So hopefully I can clear some of those things up in this video by way of general guidance. Obviously this is not intended as legal advice and it is not intended to encourage any kind of confrontation with the police, but nonetheless help you to understand what your position is if the police stop you and talk to you. So welcome back, I'm the Black Belt Barrister helping you to understand law. In this video, talking about the police. So do you have to speak to the police? Do you have to give them your name? Do you have to give them your address? Do you have to give them your date of birth? Do you have to answer their questions? Well, the answer is, it depends. There are a couple of different situations and between them, a thin line, a thin blue line, if you will. So let's start with police officers in general. Police officers may be in uniform, they may not be in uniform. Whereas a PCSO, a police community support officer, must be in uniform if they want to stop and question you. But as a precautionary note, just because someone is in a police uniform does not necessarily mean that they are, in fact, a police officer. And if a police officer does stop you, you are perfectly entitled to ask for their warrant card and to speak to any of their colleagues, particularly if they're in plain clothes, then of course they should produce a warrant card in any event if they stop to question you. In fact, the College of Policing's practical guide to plain clothes officers is that if they arrest someone, they should summon another colleague as soon as possible, preferably in uniform. And the Metropolitan Police say that if you are alone with a single officer and no one else arrives or no one is there, Ask some searching questions, such as where are your colleagues? Which station are you from? How did you get here? And are other officers going to attend? And just to restate, every officer should have a warrant card with them at all times. And police officers are also expected to carry this warrant card with them even if they are off duty, because if they intend to or need to intervene in anything else whilst they're off duty, then of course they need their warrant card as well. So if you are in any way suspicious and the person claiming to be a police officer doesn't produce a warrant card, then in light of recent news events, I would suggest that you phone the police yourself because nothing worse can happen than what's already happening. But of course, if the person isn't really a police officer, then you would need to summon help in any event. And worse still, if you are absolutely fearing for your safety, you can scream out and call for help if you really think this person is not a police officer. So now let's talk about what the police officer or PCSO might generally stop to talk to you about. Typically they might ask who you are, what you're doing, where you're going, where you've been, and things like this. Without more, you can refuse to answer these questions and the police cannot arrest you for refusing to answer these questions. That's just the starting point. But this is where the thin blue line comes in. Because if the officer suspects that you're involved in some kind of antisocial behavior or some other kind of offense, then, and when asked to do so, then you must give your name and address to the police officer. And if you fail to do so, you are committing a further offence. But if the officer does have a suspicion that you've committed some kind of offence, then they must inform you of the general nature of the offence that they believe that you've committed and some kind of detail. But just informing you that they have this suspicion would be enough to then ask you for your name, address, and potentially also your date and place of birth. This is so that they can identify you in line with their inquiries. And so just to restate, in that situation, if the officer does believe or suspect that you've been involved in some kind of offence, and you refuse to give those details, or in fact you give false details, and it's obvious to the officer that you've given false details or refused to give any details at all, then you are committing a further offence for which you could be arrested and charged. Equally, if you've given some details and you've been asked to remain there whilst the police officer checks and verifies the information that you've provided, then you must remain there. And again, if you don't stay there, again, you could be charged with a separate offence. If you try to remove yourself from the area, whether you've given details or not, then the police may use reasonable force to detain you 
whilst they verify your information. And again, if you absolutely refuse and try to get away, then you might be arrested. As to whether or not the police can stop and search you, well, they can only stop and search you in a number of situations. First and foremost, they may have a search warrant, and they will only have this if they've had reasonable evidence to obtain the search warrant in the first place. Secondly, if the officers have reasonable grounds to suspect that you've committed a crime or that you're about to commit a crime, let's say you look like you're about to steal a car or you look like you're about to burgle a house, then they might have reasonable grounds to suspect that you're about to commit one of those offences and again they might search you. If you want a full explanation of your rights if you are being searched, I have another video on that topic which I'll put in the description below. But equally, if the officer suspects that you're a danger to yourself or you're a danger to others or that you're carrying weaponry, particularly on school grounds or if you're involved in any kind of terrorist activity and things like this, these might also form the grounds and the basis for a search as well. So just a brief note on the right to silence and how that differs with whether or not you have to speak to the police. Identifying yourself to the police officer is different from exercising your right to silence. So for example, if the police officer suspects that you're involved in a crime, then and asks for your name and address and date of birth and things like this, then you are required to give those details to identify yourself to the officer, and failure to do so would be an offence. But that is different from exercising your right to silence. So let's say that you are now arrested for suspicion of committing that offence. Part of the caution is that you do not have to say anything. And this means exactly that. You do not have to say anything. And this is because you are not obliged to say something that is self-incriminating. This is partly because you are not required to say something that would be self-incriminating. But also because you have the right to free legal advice before you are questioned. So the right to silence, as it were, is more to do with you not having to answer questions in any kind of interview or even questions posed to you by the police officer, aside from providing your details such as your name and address in the situations that I've just described. So when you see heated debates and discussions online as to whether or not you have to tell the police anything, including your name and address and things like this, please heed this as a caution because it could get you into even more trouble if you refuse to give those details. If it turns out that the officer was indeed acting lawfully, you failed to cooperate and you are then arrested and charged. So I hope this video is useful. Please share it with somebody that you think might find it useful. Don't forget to subscribe and as always, thank you for watching.